Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Apollo 11 Command Module to go on U.S. tour, Santa Monica City Council is at it again, Doc B-29 makes his third flight. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson, it's March 2nd and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Apollo 11 Command Module Columbia, the only portion of the historic spacecraft to complete the first mission to land a man on the moon and safely return him to Earth, will lead the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum for the first time in 46 years for the traveling exhibition Destination Moon, the Apollo 11 mission. The exhibition's two-year national tour will celebrate the approaching 50th anniversary of the mission and explore the birth and development of the American space program and the space race. The planned tour will bring the command module and more than 20 one-of-a-kind artifacts from the historic mission to some of the top museums in the country. The Apollo 11 command module will return to a place of honor in the new exhibition Destination Moon scheduled to open in 2021. Through original Apollo 11 flown objects, models, videos, and interactives, visitors will learn about the historic journey of the Apollo 11 crew. Destination Moon will include an interactive 3D tour created from high-resolution scans of Columbia, performed at the Smithsonian in spring 2016. The interactives will allow visitors to explore the entire craft, including its intricate interior, an interior that has been inaccessible to the public until now. Even with a legal challenge pending led by the NBAA, the Santa Monica City Council night has several items on its agenda that would move the city towards its goal of closing Santa Monica Airport by 2028. The council considered a resolution directing the city staff to take all actions necessary and proper to ensure that SMO will cease to operate as an airport by the end of 2028, according to a report appearing in the Santa Monica Lookout. The resolution includes language preventing the city manager from making any agreements with the FAA or any other party that may have the effect of requiring the city to continue to operate KSMO beyond the 2028 deadline. Also on the agenda was a proposed contract for the shortening of the runway from just under 5,000 feet to 3,500 feet, a major component of their agreement with the FAA. Not everyone on the council was in favor of the agreement with the FAA, but those opposed did not support keeping the airport open. They wanted to be able to close it sooner than 2028. The aviation community, of course, is opposed to its closure and is awaiting the legal challenge to the FAA's deal with the city being led by the NBAA. After the break, Doc the B-29 flies again. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The restored B-29 dock made its third flight last Saturday and was able to raise its landing gear for the first time, allowing the airplane to reach its top speed of about 222 knots. Dock departed from McConnell AFB just before 10.30 local time and arrived at what will eventually be her permanent home at Wichita's Eisenhower Airport about two hours later. Jim Murphy, project manager of the Dock Restoration Project, told the station that the airplane performed flawlessly, 
He said that the flight was completed with zero squawks. The crew is still working towards final authorization from the FAA for the aircraft. Murphy said that the focus will soon shift to raising money for a permanent home for the B-29 at Eisenhower Airport. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. March is a big month for Airborne. Following our daily coverage of HAI's Heli Expo March 7th through 9th in Dallas, ANN has to hustle to Louisiana to prepare our annual AEA live programming. Watch worldwide by the aviation community. Live AEA coverage will take place in New Orleans from March 13th through 16th. Primary live coverage will commence Monday, March 13th with the webcasting of AEA's Pivotal New Product Introduction Series, in which upwards of 30 avionics innovators will reveal new products and programs for a live audience. Show coverage will commence at 0830 Central Time. ANN is introducing a new live viewing portal with enhanced functionality which will be available for all live programming via www.airborne-live.net. Two more days of informative live interviews and special programming will start Tuesday, March 14th at 1200 Central Time, with three-plus hours of live programs concentrating on the news created by Monday's NPI. On Wednesday, March 15th, the second live interview program will commence at 1300 Central Time. The day's programming will concentrate on recent avionics issues and AEA business. ANN will be unveiling new program innovations at AEA this year, including pre- and post-show mobile live features involving both the NPI sessions as well as additional mobile live reporting. After these messages, John Goglia says the FAA should stop tracking drones. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best-selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call around the patch. After the release of a report tracking drone sightings by pilots of manned aircraft, Forbes contributor John Goglia writes that the FAA should not stop the practice of collecting reports of the sightings altogether. That's because there is no evidence in the report that drones are causing any real threat to manned aviation. Air Force fighter pilot Colonel Fred V. Cherry, who was shot down over North Vietnam in 1965, has gone west. The 87-year-old African-American pilot spent seven years as a prisoner of war. Colonel Cherry passed away in a hospital in Washington, D.C., February 16th. Miracle flights welcomed 2017 with 588 life-saving flights during January 2017. This marks the highest January flight count in the charity's three-decade history. The nonprofit transports patients from all over the U.S., as well as all over the globe. Supersonic passenger airplanes are another step closer to reality as NASA and Lockheed Martin begin the first high-speed wind tunnel test for the quiet supersonic technology explained preliminary design at NASA's Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. The agency is testing a 9% scale model of Lockheed Martin's X-plane design. Air Wisconsin pilots represented by ALPA are applauding a new agreement with an old partner, United Airlines, that will give their carrier new flying for five years or more. The agreement came as a Wisconsin-based carrier was nearing the end of another contract. 
this one with American Airlines. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The Montana State Senate has passed a bill that will prevent patients who require transportation by air ambulance from receiving sky-high bills from the ambulance companies. The bill passed unanimously before the Senate adjourned for its mid-session break. Several patients testified before Senate committees that they had received bills for tens of thousands of dollars from the companies because the provider was not included in their insurance networks. Under the bill, the patient would only pay the normal copay for transportation by an air ambulance. The remainder of the bill will be negotiated by the insurance company and the air ambulance provider. The bill now goes to the Montana House for consideration. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.